good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today we are coming back with the return of a series we haven't done for a little while, and that is which set should you be collecting, investing in, phrase it how you like. There are a bunch of Pokemon sets. Which one should you be picking? And today we're going to be looking at Pokemon Card 151, which isn't quite out yet, but is out very soon and is an incredibly exciting set. Obsidian Flames, which has just released, and Powder Evolved, which is your kind of established set, which has been out for a little while. So which one should you actually go for? Well, if we start with Powder Evolved, there are lots of good things about Powder Evolved. But one thing we need to bear in mind about Powder Evolved, and this is incredibly relevant, it is a big set that is made up of three Japanese sets. And that is very relevant, because it means that when it comes to Illustration Rares, for instance, we are looking at 36, whereas Obsidian Flames we'll get to in a minute, there are like 12. And that is very, very, very important. So, Padera Evolved is made up of the Japanese main double set, Snow Hazard and Clay Burst. And then also brings in the mini set, Triple Beat. So, all three of those sets are essentially coming in. And that means that there are nine gold cards, because there are three in each set. 36 illustration rares, because there are 12 in each set, etc. This is very, very important. Because it means that when it comes to Powder Evolved, it is genuinely going to be harder to pull the individual secret rare that you're actually after. Because there are so many more of them in the set, that just kind of makes sense that the odds of getting the exact one that you want, obviously end up being a little bit lower. Told you that, it's important, but I've told you, we can move on. What I will say is, there is a lot to like about Powder Evolved. Powder Evolved is a very, very, very good set. In terms of playability, a lot of people still think Meowth's Garada could be good. Jury's out, but, you know, be nice if it was. Obviously, Chen Pao back Scalibur has become one of the best decks in the format. It's not picked up that big signature win yet, but it's still a deck which an awful lot of people think could be very good. We've got cards like Spiritomb, which are being played in a bunch of decks and providing an awful lot of benefit to those decks. We've got things like Ting Lu, which could be a very good control deck, although again, not quite proven it yet. I think Copperage has got a lot of potential as a little bit of a tank deck. Let's not forget Squawkabilly is a really good staple for early game draw in a bunch of decks. And that's kind of my point here. And then of course you've got kind of Iono as a staple in every deck as a draw slash disruption card. And then you got stuff like Artisan and a million other cards. Reversal Energy, I could keep going, you get the point. Playability-wise, Powder Evolved is a very, 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 very good set. But then you've got all of these artwork rares. And look, there are some absolutely phenomenal ones. Tyranitar is one that everybody is absolutely loving. Raichu is one that everybody is absolutely loving. Let's not forget Magikarp has become the illustration rare from the first few sets. The regular one, at least, not special, that everybody is after. You've got, for me, it is all about that Fuey Coco. There are some really, really good cards here. And then, of course, when you get to special illustration rares, you've got your Chen Pao, you've got your Squawkabilly, you've got your Meow Scarada, but then you've got your Iono. And Iono is like the big card, and certainly in terms of value so far, this is one of the biggest cards in the Pokemon TCG, in terms of the Scarlet and Violet era, but it's also going to be holding its value a lot better than some of the others. So the Special Illustration Rare Charizard EX from Obsidian Flames, we'll get to that in a moment, that's already dropped below Iono. It's not been out anywhere near as long. The set came out three months later. It's already dropped below. Iono is holding its value way better. So Panair Evolved isn't necessarily the flashy set, but it's got a lot of good cards, a lot of good illustration and special illustration rares. However, do bear in mind that because it's made of three Japanese sets, pulling the individual one you want is going to be more difficult. Now, Obsidian Flames is a very different kind of set to Powder Evolved. For instance, it's made of one Japanese set. That is to say, Ruler of the Black Flame. That is it. 
So we've got one third of the illustration rares, one third of the gold cards, etc., that we see from Powder Evolved. That is a huge, gigantic difference, and you've got to bear that in mind. However, you do have Charizard. And we do need to kind of bear that in mind. The fact that we've got Charizard in here makes a huge, gigantic difference, because that is going to be one of the big cards. However, bear in mind that because it's going to be easier to pull than a lot of the other cards we see in, you know, Powder Air Evolved, it's bringing the price down. It has already dropped below Iono, and it's probably going to keep dropping further. So it really depends where you come down on this. If you're looking at it as a kind of, I want my cars to be worth lots of money in the future, getting a set with a comparatively very low amount of secret rares, arguably not ideal. If you look at it as, I want to pull these cards, oh yeah, no, this is absolutely the way to go. Because we've also got the full art Charizard, and we've also got the gold Charizard, which is amazing. But again, the, you know, there's only three gold cards in the set. So it's a lot easier to pull these than it is in other sets, and the value is reflecting them. The gold Charizard is already at a $30 card. The full art is already at about a $25 card. This is important to bear in mind the values are falling. And in terms of the other cards here, it's not such a good set in terms of, hey look, there are a bunch of amazing cards. I mean, if we go just purely for value for a moment outside of the Charizard, I mean, the best non-Charizard card in the set is your Special Illustration Rare Pidgeot, which is like a $15 card. To be fair, the number four card in the set is the regular Charizard, which is like a $25 card. Outside of Charizard, Obsidian Flames is not a particularly good set in terms of value because it's basically the Charizard set. And in terms of playability, I don't think it's got a patch on Powder Air Evolved either. Like, Toad School's pretty good, but we've already got an Espeon that does exactly that. So I'm not sure how much we really need it. Maridon's okay, but it's not as good as the other Maridon. Uh, maybe Clefable? But even that is just kind of, it's reducing retreat costs. It's not exactly phenomenal. And then we kind of start struggling. I do like your Glamora here, which lowers bench size, but it's not exactly stunning. I mean, honestly, by far my favorite card in the set is the Sizzle. 10 damage plus 50 for each of your opponent's Pokemon that has an ability. I do think that could be really good. Obviously, we've got Pidgeot, which is good for searching out any card during your turn. Some people think it's going to be amazing. Some people don't. But it's really not that great of a set overall. There's some decent cards in here, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm a big fan of Gita. Being able to accelerate energy without ending your turn. You can't attack, but you can use something else to end your turn. But again, the fact that it came of one Japanese set rather than three, and then was made up with other little things and promos, etc. That means that generally, overall... It has got a lower amount of playable cards. And I still think the Cleffer is maybe the best illustration rare we've seen. And a lot of people adore the Ninetales. Somehow pulled two of them from 10 packs in Japan. Not so how, but loving it. And sure, we've got the Gold Arters on. But I do think it's fair to say that Obsidian Flames doesn't have as many cool cards as Powder Air Evolved. And doesn't have as many playable cards as Powder Air Evolved. The argument for Obsidian Flames is pretty simple. It's the Charizard set... And also, because there are so many fewer secret rares in the set, it is going to be a lot easier to pull the particular one you want. And then we get to Pokemon card 151. Now, it is worth bearing in mind this is not a set that you can just go out and buy, like packs of. You have to buy special products of them. Obviously, as I've told you many times before, the Mew Ultra Premium Collection being the best among them, but there's a million others like the poster collection that's got the Okacheke Bulbasaur promo and the Alakazam and Zapdos EX boxes with those alternate art EXs. There's a million things out there. The best value, as I've told you many times before, is the booster bundle, which is just six packs for the price of six packs. It's the only set where the booster bundle becomes amazing because you can't just go out and buy packs. However, it does mean that the booster bundle tends to sell out pretty quickly you have been warned. 
But generally speaking, as a whole, this set is absolutely amazing. Obviously, we've got special illustration rares of the Charizard, the Blastoise, the Venusaur, as an example. And then you've got yourself Erika's Invitation, which was the big card over in Japan, which comes with an amazing special illustration rare. That's one people are going to be absolutely all over. You know, the artwork on the Zapdos card is absolutely stunning. Remember that the Mew is also stunning, but the Mew is in the Ultra Premium Collection. You have been warned. And then, of course, in terms of the regular illustration rares, you've got Pikachu. You've got Squirtle, you've got Charmander, you've got all of these Gen 1 favourites, there's a Snorlax in there. Oh, and I've got to mention the Poliwild and how ridiculous that artwork is. So certainly in terms of the secret rares here, 151 has pretty much got the other sets beat, because it's 151, it's Gen 1, it is featuring a whole bunch of staples. You know, you've got a really cool Pikachu and you've got the amazing Charizard there at the same time. Thank goodness Mew was put in the Ultra Premium Collection, because otherwise I'm genuinely worried as to how ridiculous that one could have gotten. Also, we need to bear in mind, like, look at the Charizard here, look at them in a row. You've got artwork that makes it up. We see the same thing from Blastoise here as well. It's just phenomenal. So certainly in terms of secret rares, I think 151 wins hands down. But 151 also has something that the other two don't, and that is it's got a theme. It is the original 151. And the set list numbers are actually the same as the Pokedex numbers. So Pikachu is card number 25. And Squirtle is card number 7. And it's got all of the original 151, which, bearing in mind, is great for so many people who have got that nostalgia for the original 151. And that's why I think for a lot of people this is going to be a pretty easy decision. But it's actually a really, really playable set as well. I think Mew is an absolutely stunning, phenomenal card. It's got free retreat. It lets you draw until you've got three cards in your hand, and you can use multiple of these during your turn. Only one per Mew, but you can have up to four Mew. And then, of course, free energy. You get to copy any of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks, and you don't need the correct energy here, which is kind of ridiculous. We've got the Alakazam that can attack from the bench, which is absolutely stunning. We've got Blastoise here, which can do 280 for 2 energy, while having 330 HP and taking 30 damage less from attacks, which I think has a potential to be really, really good here. We've got Cycling Rose that lets you discard a basic energy from your hand and draw a card. That's going to be a staple in a whole bunch of decks. We've got an Aerodactyl that can do 100 while devolving which you know is going to be doing a whole bunch of work in some silly rogue decks. The kind like I'm going to make. We got a Jinx that gets an instant KO on any Pokemon that's asleep. And a Hypno that will instantly put them to sleep. We've got Zapdos that for free energy does 120 to the active and 90 to a bench Pokemon with any damage on. That's going to be a stable in a whole bunch of Lightning decks. We've got a Ditto that if it's your first turn and it's active, you get to swap it for any basic in your deck which incidentally is absolutely ridiculous because it means you're going to start with your preferred Pokemon, well, frankly, a lot. And this just kind of keeps going. This is a themed set, a bit of a gimmick set, if you will, but it's actually full of legit playable cards. Uh, Raticate for two energy does 30 damage plus 30 more for each damage counter on your opponent's active. Sure, he's got low HP, but that is going to very, very quickly get KOs on a lot of stuff. We've got Extra Tight Belt, which takes 30 less damage on the stage 2 it's attached to. We've got Wiggles, who's got 100 extra HP if you've got any special energy attached to it. It's just good card after good card after good card. And some of these are like legit full-on staples, and some of these are interesting ideas. But my point is there is a lot in here. Like, a ridiculous amount. And I do think it is... And I don't always say this when I do these kind of videos. I think it is a runaway victory for 151. I think 151 is massively more playable than Obsidian Flames. And there's a very good argument it's going to be more playable than Powder Air Evolved. And I think in terms of collectability, it's got the best secret rares. It's got the best theme. 
for me, it really is 151 at the top. And then it really depends where you fall down in terms of Obsidian Flames. If there are specific secret rares you want and you want the easier time to pull them because there's so many fewer of them, or you're just a big Charizard fan, Obsidian Flames is the better set. Otherwise, I really do think the better set here is going to be Powder Evolved. So there we go. A definitive answer. And I think that's cool. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you think about this. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. And of course, get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely Ashley Munns, who is our newest supporter and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.